Hi everyone, we're here today with Chaya Muggle, who is the ex-captain of the UAE national team. Chaya has also played India State Cricket for JNK, as well as playing for Fair Break. Chaya, welcome to Associate Women in Cricket. Um, just to get us started, can you just introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your journey? Hey, Az, thank you so much for having me today. And I'm really, really happy to share my journey with all the viewers out there. And uh, I'm glad to tell that I come from a very beautiful place called this, Jammu and Kashmir back in India. And I started playing from a very young age, um, maybe around eight or nine years when I was there, you know, like being all Indians, you know, cricket was in my blood as well. And my dad and my brother used to play the Kali cricket and they used to take me along with them. And that's how I started playing cricket, you know, with all the big people out there, with all the uncles and all the boys, you know, that's how I started playing. And gradually, you know, it uh, caught my interest and I started having, uh, building a strong uh, interest in terms of playing cricket. And that's how I joined the stadium, the stadium where the cricket was happening in uh, Jammu and Kashmir at that time. And uh, uh, yeah, I started playing and then uh, I have represented my state at various levels. Uh, I started by in uh, playing in junior level, then senior and then sub-senior, you know, like I've crossed all the levels and uh, which is really helping me now because I can very much relate myself to all the youngsters out there, you know, who are going through all these phases and all these levels of their life. Uh, so, yeah, and then in pursuit of uh, better career options, I landed here in Dubai in the year 2009. Well, I was uh, uh, really persistent to play cricket and I kept looking for the opportunities to play here in UAE. But it took me six years to even know that, you know, cricket existed in UAE. So there was no pathway kind of a thing, you know, that one could find here in UAE being the Gulf country. It was very difficult. And then uh, gradually I took hold of somebody who introduced me to the coach, you know, and then they took a trial and they found me good enough because I was already playing cricket. So by then already six years have been passed and then I was eligible enough to be in the team. So that's how I debuted in the year 2015 to play golf up for UAE. Oh, that's awesome. That's a really inspiring story. Um, and I, I guess just for our viewers, I'm most interested to know, so how, what was it like playing um, at for JNK, for the India um, state team and how did that compare to the UAE and the setup in the UAE? Oh well obviously if we talk about uh, the the facilities that were offered you know uh, I'm talking about long back you know when I was a kid and the facilities at that time especially coming from a GNK state which which is so known as the troubled one you know and there are always a news coming of which is not so good so there were a lot of uh, uh, a lot of apprehensions were there. There were a lot of uh, obstacles, I can say, you know, which were there. But then coming here, you know, it was totally different. I mean, the level of standards, the ICC ground, you know, it was amazing. You know, it was like uh, the two sides of a coin, you know, I could say that. And then it was totally different from me. You know, it, it may not be now because there is a lot of improvement that has happened over the period of time in Jammu and Kashmir as well. But I'm talking about the time when I used to play there. So at that point of time, there were not many grounds available. The facilities were very limited. Uh, the number of matches that we used to get, they were very limited, of course. And then, uh, uh, yeah, so all that was contrary to me when I came here and things were totally opposite. Okay, and I guess that kind of leads me on to my next next question, which is how are things different from for the youngsters in the UAE? So the young, like the other Satish, um, Isha Oza, Kavisha, all of them, how is it different from them now compared to when you were young? Uh, well, I would say that, uh, yes, the facilities, you know, uh, that's the first thing that comes to my mind because getting those facilities at the very young age, you know, it gives you a lot of uh, uh, positive thing that can help you, you know, just to, to kickstart your journey, you know, it, it acts as a catalyst in your journey, which in, uh, which is already there, you just have to go and use those things, you know. Mm -hmm. So I would say uh, now in UA, there are a lot of uh, sports academies, uh, which in turn, I missed when I used to play, you know, there were not many. Uh, if I used to come, there were barely any any academies in UAE or even in Jammu and Kashmir, if I talk about those, you know. So uh, back in those days, I think it's it's the number of facilities that are available and uh, 
the opportunities to play cricket, you know, they were very limited. But compared to that, I feel now they have a lot of opportunities, you know, and they have a lot of platforms to go and perform, you know, wherein one thing could lead into another. So I would say the opportunities have been maximized. And uh, yeah, and of course, the system has changed. I would say resources are changed. So facilities, of course, are there. And how would you say, so obviously there's been a rise in social media in how much visibility women cricket players are getting. Do you think that makes a huge impact in how visible then these youngsters are compared to when you were younger? Definitely, I would say it has a huge impact. You know, people are so active on social media. You don't have to go anywhere to share your story. You can just sit at your home and just with a few clicks of your finger, you know, you can just move around the world. You can just share it with someone who's sitting in the other part of the world. And it's so easy. And, you know, you can share your success stories with anyone out there. But, you know, people barely know what I have done in my, what I have done when I used to play in Jammu and Kashmir. Maybe I've scored a brilliant half century and maybe I've taken those five wickets hold, but nobody knows it because at that point of time, it was not that easy, you know, to share like how it is now, the exposure, the the social media is giving to everyone, you know, you yeah. don't even need reporters or press for that. You can just do it by yourself. So definitely it's making a huge impact. Mm -hmm. And uh, if used positively, I would say it's a great tool. It's a great weapon, you know, to share your success stories and motivate others. No, completely agree. And there just seems to be so much more coverage of women's sports now. Like you can actually go see the scorecards, you can like live stream games, which I mean, previously, I guess people would be interested exactly. in watching it, but you just wouldn't know where. Yeah. To so yeah. Sometimes I do feel that, you know, like I wanted to see when I was young, you know, what, what, how have I changed, you know, with a period of time, but then I don't have recordings or, uh, any live videos when I used to play back then in my younger age you know so I do miss those things so yeah yeah so definitely no but definitely it's, a big positive for women's sports yeah you can see that it's moving forward um but okay going on to you then so obviously you announced your big retirement fairly recently um how do you feel about um retiring from cricket uh, well, I feel uh, much relaxed, you know, I feel uh, satisfied. I'm very happy with the way I have done whatever in cricket. I feel, you know, I've played a lot of cricket and I always say this, that cricket has given me plenty of things, a lot of opportunities, the recognition that I have now. And I wanted to give something back to cricket. So, you know, it's it's just that sense of accomplishment that you feel, you know, that you've done something. And you're very happy about it. I won't say proud, but then I own this happiness, you know. So it gives me a sort of a relief kind of a thing. And I feel happy sharing my stories to others. And if, it, if I could motivate others, you know, I would feel uh, my job is done. Mm -hmm. um, that's awesome. And what are your plans now that you've retired? Well, uh, fortunately, I'm with cricket. So it's nice to develop young women cricket out there so I'm working as a women's development officer now in UAE from Emirates Cricket Board and I visit a lot of schools a lot of universities and uh, colleges you know and go for talent and scouting missions and all that stuff and I and I get to see so many young talented girls out there you know who are so passionate about playing cricket so my job is now to bring them, you know, get to get them to train with us, with the facilities that we provide. As of now, like Emirates Cricket Board is offering free training session to all the young aspiring female cricketers below the age of 19 who wants to come and play cricket. Well, they can come and we offer free training sessions to them with our uh, elite coaches, you know, and it's under my supervision that I take care of those uh, sessions and we call it Get Into Cricket for Girls. So it's happening at a couple of places as of now. One is in Sharjah at Skyline University every Friday, and the other one is in Dubai at Glendale International School. So yeah, I'm into the development process now, and uh, I'm looking after the pathway structure that UAE has formed. And uh, uh, basically, at the grassroots level, we are trying to get as many girls as possible so that we can have a huge bunch of young, talented girls ready to be pushed forward whenever there is a need. And what for you is the most rewarding part of doing all that? So what do you what do you get out of doing what you're doing with the young girls? Uh, 
Well, I think I feel immense happiness to show someone the path to get out there because that's something I have missed when I was there. You know, so I don't want somebody to take another six years to reach up to that level, which they had been deserving before. So, you know, it sort of gives me a, a sense of satisfaction that, yes, what I'm doing is something good. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, getting the right person at the right place, you know. So, so my job is basically uh, to help the youngsters, you know, in shaping up their career. And of course, helping the UAE national side, you know, since I said I want to give something back in return. So if I could get some talented young girls out there, you know, who could help my team to be even more stronger. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the best thing I can do for my team. No, 100%. It's still my team. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of paying it forward, I guess. Like, you know, you've had so many opportunities with cricket. So like helping the, you know, the younger generation experience what you have yeah. as well. Um, and the team in general, so the UAE team has just gone from strength to strength in recent years, qualifying for the World Cup qualifiers, um, the beat Thailand at the recent qualifiers. Um, what do you think is the biggest factor that has led to the U to the UAE beating top teams in Asia? Well, I think uh, we keep it really simple. You know, it's just the belief. It's just the belief that we can do that. And when you start believing in yourself, you know, you you could accomplish anything. And that's the belief that we went in, you know, when we went to play this Asia qualifier tournament. And all of us believe that. And the good thing is that we all were on the same page, you know. We believe that we could do this. Even while scoring, you know, less runs on board, which we have never been able to defeat Thailand before. You know, we tried a lot of time, but then it took us like another, I would say, three or four years, you know, we were never able to beat them. But then this time, you know, there was something different, like all of us were having this, this kind of positive attitude and a belief in ourselves. Like I said, you know, like when you have a strong belief that you can do whatever you want, you know, as a team together, you can accomplish anything that's coming your way. And after that first innings, you know, I remember going out and the score was so low on the total. And then we all sat in the dressing room and we all decided, that if they can get us out at this lowest total, we can also, you know, if they can, why can't we? And we, our strength was bowling at that time and we were bowling so well. Our bowlers were uh, bowling with perfect line and length, you know, they were in good rhythm. So mm -hmm. I said, this time the bowlers are going to win games for us. And that's what happened, you know? So it's the belief, it's the unity that kept us together. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that paid back. So we always have our slogan, like one team, one dream. So it literally was one dream for all of us to just qualify and beat any opposition that's coming our way. We don't go by name, but then it's every game that mattered to us. So we wanted to be unbeaten and we did that. No, it was an awesome game to watch. And yeah, I think all of you, like you said, your bowlers really did a lot of damage. Yeah. And your spinners especially were incredible that tournament. I think you bowled really well as well. So congratulations on that. Um, Thank you. And so what is your favorite memory of being captain? Hmm, that's a tough one because uh, it's really close to my heart. But then I would say uh, Asia Cup, you mm -hmm. know, which we played in Bangladesh against India, mm -hmm. against Pakistan, against Sri Lanka, Bangladesh. I think that was like a dream come true, especially playing against India, you know, having those players that you've always seen on television and then you're playing live against them, you know. I remember when I went for the toss and Smithy was there and then we shook hands and, you know, they tossed the coin up. And it was like, for some time, I couldn't believe that it's happening. But then we were mentally prepared for it. I was actually, but then the other players, you know, they're being very young. And then since they were on the field, there were moments of like being in awe all the time. And we used to literally push them, guys, wake up, we are in the game. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh my gosh, with this batting, Jimmy is batting. And <laughs> Yeah, it was like the fun moment for them. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but the good thing is we started off really well at some stage, you know, like half of the innings was, we all did so well, you know, we, we didn't bother about the result, of course, because it was a huge experience for each one of us. So mm -hmm. I think that's the best memory I've collected. And uh, yeah, other than that, uh, yes, it's another thing which is uh, very close to my heart. It's uh, giving 20 consecutive wins to UAE, you know, which is second to Australia mm -hmm. as a captain. Mm -hmm. So 
yeah, I, I feel that's the greatest achievement for me. That's awesome. And off the field, do you have any like special moments with your team that, you know, that were, um, were dear to you or that were close to your heart? Uh, of course, my last day, you know, I remember playing against Namibia mm -hmm. and that was our home ground in Dubai Cricket Stadium. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was a bit of a very emotional journey for me. And, you know, having that guard corner is something that I can never forget. You know, even in my dreams, I still get those uh, reflexes in my mind. And I cannot forget how everybody was in tears, including myself, you know. And then we had a lunch together after that. And then uh, they were all trying to cheer me up. And, you know, sort of all those things, I would feel uh, it was like a family for me. So yeah. they they still are like a family for me. They they Every now and then they give me a call and I talk to them. We visit each other. And, uh, yeah, I think sharing those moments, sharing the dressing room with all of them, it was always special. Yeah. No, I know exactly how you feel in terms of that. It's just, it is, I, can, I can't imagine how emotional that must have been. But I mean, I guess the good thing is you probably get to reflect on, you know, your career and actually appreciate all the milestones, which you might not have done as much when you were playing because it's always about the next thing. Um, yeah. Okay, well, what will you miss most, do you think, about being captain and playing for the UAE? Uh, well, I wouldn't say I miss playing cricket because I still play that, you know, whenever I get time in the net, I do my nets and uh, I play domestic games as well. You know, I'm open for franchise cricket also. So I won't say I'm missing playing cricket. But then, you know, uh, wearing the UAE uniform is something that I always loved, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, those colours and the emblem is on your T-shirt, you know, you feel pride in knowing that. So that's something I miss, you know. But then I feel being with UAE cricket, you know, I sort of like, uh, uh, it's okay, you know, I, I still feel being part of that. So I don't miss that exactly, you know, it's there. So I would say it's like a mixed kind of emotion. Yeah. Kind of yeah. So that's, that's something I feel I'm going to miss wearing that jersey and stepping out on the ground for the toss and then getting my team ready to play. I think that's something I will miss. No, but Chaya, overall, like, congratulations on a really successful career. Um, and yeah, it's been a pleasure kind of seeing you both on the field and off the field and getting to know you as a person. Um, but that's all for today. And thank you so much for speaking to me. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. And uh, yeah, good luck. Thank you.